You want to have some fun at home with your friends? You take out three cards. Take out the Queen of Club, Ace of Diamond, and the Jack of Spades. Watch that Ace of Diamond. Because when I put it onto the table, you have to bet where it is. And when you bet where it is, believe me, you're going to guess wrong because I put the Ace of Diamonds over here. And all I did was when I showed you those three cards, I made that Ace of Heart look like an Ace of Diamond. Hi, my name is Sal Piasanti. I'm an expert on casino cheating. Casinos all over the world hire me to help protect their assets. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing some clips from TV shows and movies on casino cheating. This scene is from Rain Man. <laughs> hey, what's your secret, guys? You cheat. I'm sure he was joking there, but a lot of people do think card counting is illegal and it's cheating. It is not. Card counting is not cheating. What do you see? Well, he's not catching the whole card, and he's not past posting this. I don't see him using a computer. Surveillance made some good observations. He's not catching the dealer's whole card, which means when the dealer takes his card, you're not seeing the card underneath. He's not past posting, which means he's not adding to his bet, and he's not using computers. Now, when they talk about using computers, these are just some of the things they could be referring to. For example, if you look at these shoes right here, this shoe is the only shoe I have where it's cut away so you can actually see the switches inside it. But these computers are called perfect strategy computers. They keep track of every card that's being dealt and know exactly what's left. Once the computer decides on how to play your hand, it vibrates on this little solenoid right here through a series of Morse code dots and dashes and tells you how to play your hand. These computers right here could play blackjack better than the brain could possibly imagine. What he was doing was doing what these computers could do, but he was doing it in his head. He was able to keep track of how many cards were left. If somebody is actually playing like that and they're winning and surveillance can't figure out what's going on, sooner or later, they're just gonna label him as a card counter. They're gonna back off that player and say, sir, your play is too good for us. You're allowed to play any game here except blackjack. Something's not right. You know there's no one in the world can count into a six deck shoot. That's obviously a false statement because counting down with regular conventional card counting is very easy to do on a six deck shoe. Just as easy to do as a single deck. All you're doing is keeping track of the ratio of high cards versus low cards. When a deck becomes really rich in high cards, it favors the player for three reasons. You're gonna get more blackjacks, you're gonna get more 20s. Number two, you don't have to hit your 12 to 16s, the dealer must. And then three, you have additional options the dealer don't. You could hit, insure, split, surrender, double, double after a split, and no matter what card counting system you use, they are all designed to do one thing, to let you know when a deck becomes rich in tens. This scene was from Rounders. So, what are you guys playing? 2040 stud, that's the game okay. we're gonna play over. So when they say 2040, that's just a betting pattern that's set up for that game. Stud means they're playing seven card stud. Everybody gets two cards face down, and then they get the rest of the cards face up, and then the last card is dealt face down and you gotta play the best five out of the seven. That was a real false shuffle. This is the shuffle that Worm used. And these cards look like they're being shuffled. And this is exactly what he did. And you can see they're not being shuffled at all. He did a bookmark. He actually stepped back that top card, and then he shuffled, and then he just put those cards right back on top. Also, the way Worm held the deck. This is called a mechanic's grip. A mechanic is another name for a person who cheats because a mechanic could fix things and this guy could fix games. With the deck being held in this position, I could do so many cheating moves. I could peek the bottom card right now. When I square the deck up, I could look right at it. Now I know it's an ace of hearts. As I'm squaring the deck up in my hand like this, I'm looking right at it. I'm buckling that card, but it's all hidden right here. I could peek the top card. My thumb comes to the other corner and pushes it forward. So that card buckles. It's called a buckle or a bubble peek. I could peek the top card by bringing it up on my heel. I could do the bottom deal. I could deal seconds. And in many of the old books, they say, if you ever see anyone hold a deck like this, stay away. But the truth of the matter is, if you go to any casino, this is how dealers are taught to hold a deck. It's a very secure grip. So just because someone does hold a deck like this, doesn't mean they are cheating. 
but I like what I have. Bet it's 20. I know that look. I'm gonna fold. People might not realize why Mike McDermott folded three kings. Well, cheating isn't about the moves, it's about judgment. And he knew that getting three kings was gonna to be too strong. And that's why he folded that, that hand. So Mike McDermott in that scene used proper judgment and that's why he got out. All right, free card, here we go. Fourth street down. Hold on there a Whoa, easy, second. Easy, gotta this be son of a bitch is base dealing. Caught a hanger, Sarge. What is a hanger? Let's suppose I wanna deal the second card instead of the top. Well, when I come out, that might happen. That's called a hanger. You can see the second card is coming out, but it didn't make it. I left that second card hanging out. So catching a hanger does indicate cheating. What, what are you saying? I don't even know what you're saying. You're saying you're dealing off the bottom of the deck. Bottom dealing means that ace, I'm not gonna deal it from the top, I'm gonna deal it from the bottom. So if I was dealing, when I get to myself, I'll take it from the bottom. Obviously, the most important part is getting the cards you want on the bottom. So when I go for the shuffle, if you watch the shuffle, I peek down right there. I just saw an ace. Now I got an ace on the bottom. So I want to keep this ace on the bottom for the deal. When Worm is dealing, the person on his right, the, the officer, was always looking down at his hand. There were probably some strong hands that woke him up or alerted him. Worm wasn't that observant. He was just going for the money. This next scene is from The Sting. Stack me a cooler, Fry. Yeah, come on, girl. we'll be in the station in another hour. The other guys are the big losers, you're still okay. Fix me a deck, please, and nines. I'll cut it in on Clayton's deal. The term cooler means that you're gonna cool someone out. Give him four threes, give me four nines, which is two really good hands. For any poker player who receives four threes, they're gonna go all in. His partner is gonna take a deck of cards same back design, same brand, and he's gonna set them up. He's gonna prearrange them. So when he comes out, this deck goes on top of that deck, and then the blue deck gets switched in and it comes out like that. And then this deck gets dropped into a handkerchief. So if there's four people in the game, everyone is gonna get four good hands. Paul Newman's gonna get a great hand, but Lonneman is about to get one better. Four nine. Four jacks. The switch that he used right there, of course, it's Hollywood, but that would have been a vest switch. Here with my four threes right here. So if I was gonna play this hand right here. You can see they just got switched. Lonham and his partner just knew Paul Newman received four threes, but when Paul Newman turned over the four jacks, he double crossed them. He was the better cheat. This next scene is from Austin Powers. 17. Hit me. You have 17, sir. I like to live dangerously. Four. 21. Oh. There are cards like that that you could only see with the either a red lens on for luminous readers or with contact lenses, but normally it's just done with series of dots. What I'm about to show you right now is a deck of cards that they call a juice deck. This deck does have a substance on it that if your eye is not trained to see this, I promise you, you're not seeing it. If you look at this card right here on the table, it appears to be a regular card. But when I look at it, there is one part of the card right here that is slightly darker. That indicates a king. There's a little dot dead center. That means it's a four. Here, there are two dots right here. Diagonal, that means that's gonna be a seven. So once you just memorize that pattern, that's how you know what the card is. To train your eye to see it, first the deck is made very, 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 very strong where anybody could see it. And then after a while it's made lighter and lighter and lighter, where pretty soon you're the only one that can read it. King for you, sir, and a three for you. One major flaw that I've noticed in this clip is the way they were dealing. Everyone in blackjack gets two cards. When they showed Austin Powers' hand, he had a three, just all by itself, and then the dealer dealt him a second card when Austin Powers should have had those two cards dealt in front of him from the start. I also like to live dangerously. As you wish, sir. 20 beats your five. I'm sorry, sir. 
This next clip is from Casino. Now here's this guy reading the dealer's whole card and signaling his buddy at this table. The device he used is a real device. It's called a thumper. These are the ace bandages where it gets strapped onto your body. And this is the whole device right here. This goes behind your back and this goes on your thigh. The thigh is the most sensitive part of the body, one of the most sensitive parts. And then this is a toe switch. This goes on your toe or this goes in your pocket, either way you want to do it. This device right here is made for signaling. Anywhere you want to get information from point A to point B, this could be used. And when you press down with your toe, you could definitely feel this thing. When this thing is vibrating, you'll feel it. If it's poker, I can tell you what hand I have. I can tell you to check, I can tell you to raise. If it's blackjack, I can tell you the whole card silently. Greatest gambling movie made, in my opinion. It was, it's so real world. This next scene is from Ocean's 13. Everything all right? I've never seen surveillance rooms that were that secure. Usually you get in with a passcode. Again, sir, it's in lockdown. As far as getting locked into a surveillance room and systems going down, I'm telling you right now, that's not happening. I have never heard, I've never seen anything like that. You'll always be able to get out of a surveillance room should the systems go down. Snake eyes, all of it. The dice acted very, very suspiciously. These are magnetic dice right here. So these will always get ones. If I reverse the polarity, now you're gonna get sixes on those dice. When he had the lighter in his hand, that's what was controlling the magnet. When he hit the lighter or hit the switch, that's what activated the magnet to control the dice. That's the hardest part about using magnetic dice is to make them appear natural. You hit that magnet at the wrong time, you're just gonna see a die flip over when it shouldn't. One of the biggest flaws on that scene, remember, the casino does not have to cash out those chips. If they think something happened, the casinos can refuse to cash those chips out until they do a review. This next clip is from the cooler. Oh my God. Oh my God, I can feel a kick. The dice do not drop out of the sleeve into the hand. They're usually in the hand before then. Just to show you how dice can be introduced into a game, let's suppose I want to switch these blue dice for these red dice. Watch the red ones. They switch for blue. And if I want to bring them back, I bring them back. See how this dice switch works like this is the dice are in the palm already. And when you reach down to pick them up, these dice drop from the palm at the same time these dice trapeze up. One of the first things that boxman is taught is when you see a shooter throw the dice, always look for a clean hand. You see if someone is switching dice. The way dice is spotted, opposite sides total seven. So if I have a six on top, on the opposite side of that six, there will be a one. When misspotted dice are really used, here's what they look like. Okay, they're called tops or tees. These dice only have the numbers four, five, six on them. These dice right here are the most preferred method of cheating by professional dice cheats. They're percentage dice, they win the money fast, and you can't lose. With magnetic dice, they can act differently. The dice will hit the magnetic field, things can happen, loaded dice. These are guaranteed. And the only reason why they work is because the human eye can only see three sides of any cube. If I put this die on that table right now, you can only see a four, five, six. I'm assuming that the person sitting across from me is looking right now at a four, one, two, but guess what? We're all looking at four, five, sixes. Let's get it, let's get it. Oh, oh, that, that's it, right away, don't you get it. Oh. Oh. Guys, I thank you. So the cheaters will make their money, switch in the house dice, and keep playing till they lose. And then when they lose, it appears that their streak is over, walk away, and that's the end of the scam. This scene is from Runner Runner. If he doesn't roll a seven and crap out, this is gonna cost you a hundred grand. House kids sweat the money. Hey, shooter. The stick person never passes the dice out with a seven showing. That's taboo or bad luck. So that's something you'll never see. How about this? I'll fade your action. Fade the action means I'm gonna book the bet. Whoever, whoever wants the bet, I'll take it. Don't roll. If a stick person thinks something happened, they have the right to say no roll. 
that means this don't count. Shooter, can't slide the dice. No, raw. That is a real cheating move. Watch how that looks when the other die is thrown with it. So watch this six get slid and watch the other die go with it. But when you see this on a full 12 foot craps table and that die is being spun rapidly, it never tumbles, it's being spun. It's a really good illusion that both dice are being thrown legitimately. On the back wall, they have this rubber that has like little triangle shapes we call the alligator. And also the wall has a lip, a 45 degree angle. So if the dice just touch it or hit those alligator part, they're gonna tumble to ensure a player cannot slide the dice. <laughs> One shot Jesse James at 45. If you look at the dice on this clip, you see the two and the five are next to each other. When remember, the two and the five have to be on opposite sides because opposite sides of the dice always total seven on a legitimate pair of dice. This scene is from Schitt's Creek. I don't think it's an accident that Bob keeps winning. What are you talking about? Haven't you noticed how Gwen circles the table with appetizers, constantly eyeing Bob, and then he lays down a big fat bet and wins? Signaling is very, very dangerous. It's probably the number one scam that goes on in casinos every day undetected when two people get involved with collusion. And when you signal to a partner, you can do it right in front of everyone. To demonstrate signaling, I want to bring in my wife, D. So if we're playing poker, remember my wife is sitting across from me. With this hand I call, if everybody else stays in, D, what do I have? Straight. My wife said I have a straight, is she right? She is. Ace, two, three, four, five. So in a case like this, I'm sitting here with a straight. I just called. Now she'll raise me. She has nothing, but she's gonna raise me. When it gets to me, I'm gonna re-raise her. If everybody folds, now when it gets to her, she'll look at her hand and she'll, she'll say, take it. And now she'll fold and look how much money I just won. She knew I had a straight by the way I held my fingers on the back of the cards. Because I held my finger down here, that told her I had a straight. Okay, this is a fine hand. So if I go like this right now, D, what do I have? Two pair. Two pair. If she signals to me she has two pair, I want to tell her what I'm holding. D, what do I have? Eights and deuces. Eights and deuces. And that was done because of my wording. I said the word fine. Fine means eights and deuces. So we have many different ways of signaling. This next clip is from Now You See Me Too. Go, go, son, so. You're not telling us so. Right, can you get Ling Jin Sun. Mo you are, Mo you le you hoi. Ling Jin Sun. Okay, go ahead, son. There are little flourishy moves you could do that to conceal a card. I'll give you one example. When I put the deck down, right there, I palm the card. So I have a card in my hand. Then I cover the card with this hand as I come out like this, like my wrist, but it's still covered. Now I come back, so I nonchalantly want to show you both hands as I conceal it. But as far as flipping this card behind my back and flipping it 12 feet in the air, that's not happening. This next scene is from Shade. So you know the situation. We, uh, we need a third to take down some of the big pots. What they meant is they need someone else to help win the pot. You can't always have the same person winning the money. It's a big game. Soft game. If they say it's a soft game, that means pretty much you're playing with suckers that you can get away with anything with. So what do you want me to do? You play on the square during most of the game. That means just playing honestly. Just play as you normally would. Yeah, I like my hand. That's what's known as base or bottom dealing. But I will vary it by stacking as well and dealing the punch, whatever it takes. But, you know, don't worry. You'll end up a winner every time. All stacking the deck means is setting the cards up as you shuffle them. Let's suppose it's just me and you in a game, and I want to set these cards up as I shuffle. So now, if I deal these cards out, I'll give you a good hand. So you got me beat. Dealing the punch means that's a form of more cards where they put a little bump in the card, like a pinhole. So that way, when you're dealing, you feel the bump. So all the queens and kings might have like a braille system on it. And then when you deal, as soon as you feel that braille, that means you know a queen is coming up, then you deal seconds. So all he did right there was uh, multiple shift to control the aces and then a bunch of false shuffles. So here go to four aces, 
when you put them into the deck, they look like they're going in. You could do a push to remove so they come out the other side. And then from here, now he just does a bunch of false shuffles where this deck looks like they're being mixed. But honestly, they're not. So anytime I want to find those aces, they're going to be there for me. This next scene is from 21. Being part of a team has many advantages over being a solo counter. For the simple reason is you're playing with more tables, and then when the count gets rich, they call in the big money. Also, you have better camouflage because you're calling people in in the middle of a shoe. Is that guy card counting? No, he just came in the middle of a shoe. He can't be counting. Well, guess what? His teammate was. When she leaned back and crossed her arms, that was a call-in signal. That means come over to the table, we have a good count here. Changing 10,000. Sweet, too sweet. That's a mnemonic aid to transfer the count. So when she said sweet, she told him the count was plus 16. Obviously, they didn't want to get too technical for the viewers, but in card counting, you have two counts, the running count and the true count. The running count tells you the ratio of high cards versus low cards in all of the cards that remain. The true count tells you the ratio of high cards versus low cards in each single deck that remain. How do you get that number, the true count? You take the running count, which in that case was sweet 16, and you divide that by the number of decks remaining. Let's suppose it's a six deck game. If there's one deck played already, that means there are five decks remaining. Five goes into 16 three times. That means the true count would have been plus three. Everything in card counting works off the true count. Eight, split eight. Uh, can I split those? Jack counts plus 15. 10 plus 14. Him splitting eights was the correct basic strategy. Always split eights when you're playing blackjack. A 16 is the worst hand you can have. So you're always taught split eights. When you have a high count, you're gonna do things you normally wouldn't. For example, insurance, that's a big tell. When a dealer offers you insurance, which means, do you wanna bet if I have a blackjack? It's not the right thing to do for the simple reason is, there are a lot more non-tens than tens and a single deck of cards, but when the deck becomes advantageous and there are a lot more tens than non-tens, then you do take insurance. Well, if I was in surveillance and I'm watching this play, the first thing that's gonna tip me off is the money. The first thing you're taught in the casino is always follow the money. So if I'm watching the money, and this person obviously is counting, but guess what, he came in mid-shoe. That tells me, well, guess what? Somebody on his table is with that person. Well, if you wanna go to a casino and you wanna be guaranteed to come home with a small fortune, go with a large one, and you'll come home with a small one. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you, Vanity Fair.